Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. How are we today? Top of the morning to you. What do we got here, guys? One, two, three, four drakes. And one, two, three, four hens. Hey, you girls are outnumbered. You're outnumbered today. I never know what I'm going to have. I never know what I'm going to have in the mornings, guys. Sometimes there's as many as 15 of these. And these are just all wild Muscovies. Yeah. Wild Muscovies that came in here. I made a mistake. I made a mistake one day of uh, feeding them. Oh, what's over here? These are all saw palmetto, guys. All these here. And these came out of a... Uh, these seeds came out of a... Uh, wild pig's butt. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, there's a preserve to my north, a management area, and uh, the wild pigs and coyotes uh, come out and poop their seeds in the road, in the Lime Rock roads, for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's called saw palmetto. If you look here, this has got a saw edge to it. And they're constantly shooting up little pups, uh, little pups, pups, more pups, more pups. So I just keep trimming those back. Now here's a cool, here's a cool plant here. Uh, oh, this isn't cool here. See this here? See this whole <sighs> armadillos? I don't really like armadillos. Anyway. This plant here, I wish we had smell-o-vision, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is called Sweet Almond. Now, I don't know what zones, how far north. The blooms are uh, popping out, and they're falling off, too. Here's one that's played out. I don't know too much about these yet. Uh, I need to do a little more Googling on these. I got, actually I bought this one from a nursery. I have several around here. And this one's doing the best out of all of them. Yeah. And this thing will get uh, 30, 30 foot or high, uh, more high in the air. Yeah. But that's the saw ball petal plant. They, they live forever. This one got sick here. Something's going on with it. This main stalk may be dying. Maybe I heard it when I was uh, trimming out my... Uh, when I was trimming out the pups, maybe I heard the main stalk. Oh, well, what do you guys want? What do you want? You guys always bother me. Here's one here, this little hen right here. Look at her beak. It's all crooked. Some fox or something got, got her bitter face. She's been around here for three years, and uh, let's 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 feed the let's feed the boys and girls and let the chickens out. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, this little routine I go through every morning with these these little girls here, girls and boys. Just the El, El Cheapo 16% uh, tractor supply. Uh, crumbles, they call it. Layer crumbles. <coughs> so what I do... Get out of there. Get out of there. Walking around on my squash plants. All right, girls, boys, come on over here. Hey, hey, hey! Wait a minute! Don't, be, don't be so piggy. All right, go for it. Look at them, guys. Worse than, 
they're worse than piney wood rooters. They say they're good eating. A lot of people eat these things. I guess they, they eat these. They're raised actually commercially. And, uh, but I think may, mainly the Peking ducks are ones that they, you know, use commercially. You little pigs, you bunch of pigs. All right, let's let the chicken girls out. My morning routine. They got little nipples on them here. They got three nipples on here. That thing's worked great over the years. I've had that little system for about six years now. Never had a lick of trouble with it. I have a major coon problem, raccoon problem here, so these girls get locked up every night. There's only three left. I was free ranging them, but the fox were coming in and killing them all. Yep. So we lock them up every night now. Look at this thing growing out of here. Wow. You guys want a little more? God, you guys are hungry this morning. Wow. Wow. Have a little more. I'm feeling generous this morning for some reason, guys. Feeling generous. I gotta take care of the natural world, you know? It's my job. It's a crappy job, but somebody's gotta do it, right? Maybe I'll be rewarded one day. Oh, speaking of rewarding, look at this. Pineapple. This is my little one little patch I have here. I've gotta trim this thing out. This is this is sable palm, actually. Actually, the state tree, Florida state tree, believe it or not. But looky here, what's coming up? Pineapples. More pineapples. More pineapples. More pineapples. What have I got there? I had what, a year or so ago, I had 15 out of this little patch. And I just keep cutting the tops off and the shoving them back in now I got marsh rabbits that like to come in here and chew on them a little bit <clears throat> they don't do a lot of damage though but uh, this thing here look at this thing coming out this is called cassava yucca yeah it's a starchy starchy thing I've got them growing all along here all the way down that fence line yeah, they're doing good, and it's an emergency food. It's my, it's all part of my uh, food forest. You never know. You never know when crap's gonna hit the fan, guys. Something to think about, you know. These beds, these beds, guys, are full of biochar. This bed over here hasn't done very well because the sunlight's not getting on it. 
I actually should take this bed out, remove this bed, and rotate it over here. And put it in here. That's what I should do. But you can see these over on this side are doing quite well. This is butternut squash, by the way. And, uh, yeah. I've been going around here with a paintbrush. Paintbrush. I had, I had very lousy um, pollination last year. And my bees aren't working this at all. Here I've got all these bees over here, right? No, no, no bees work this stuff at all. They have no, they, they must not know I have feelings, you know? But yeah, here's, here's another. And you just go around with a paintbrush and, uh, and pollinate them, you know? I got a lot of blooms going on. This happened a lot last year. I only ended up with... I put in more plants this year than I did last year. And here's some butternut coming off. See? But I had a lot of this action last year. Now this must be the male plant here because it has no fruit on it. And uh, these are the females. So yeah, I will keep... Uh, pollinating with it with a little paintbrush small artist brush but I had a lot of fruit like that like you see there but then it only get about four inches and just fall over and drop up drop off so yeah that's wasn't all that impressive I don't need a lot of that vegetable but that's one of the vegetables that's uh, keto friendly uh, oh, look at this one. <clears throat> Brazilian pepper. This thing I whacked right down. Here's some poke salad here. Here's some poke salad. I don't eat it. <clears throat> poke salad, Annie. I don't eat it. But anyway, you know what, though, guys? Just thought of something. I think my chicken girls will like it. See this string, this ring, and ring thing here? It operates my door. I can just come up and drop it at night, and then I shove that stick through. If you don't do this, <coughs> all these girls are coon food. Raccoon food, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this Brazilian pepper, check it out. I, I nipped this thing down, guys. It, uh, last fall, I nipped it right down to nothing. This thing has come. This thing will be huge by September. September 15th, this thing will pop. You guys ate all your food already? You bunch of pigs. Wow. Hope they don't get GERD, you know. Uh, yeah, check this out. This little tree here. I, I actually planted this thing. Some guy bet me that uh, you couldn't uh, germinate these. They had to go through a bird's butt, these seeds. I proved him wrong, you do not. Uh, I took a bunch of these berries, I let them sit and kind of dry, and then I took them in my hands and I rubbed them together and knocked that red seed off. And then I put it between paper towel, damp towels, and two ceramic plates, one on the bottom, one on the top. And lo and behold, I came back in a couple of days and about 50 seeds, about 25 of them germinated. And I put them in a cup, and this here's the result. This thing's about, I don't know, five years old. And I just use it here. as I had originally, I had in here, if you look back in some of my videos, I did have a, um, I was fooling around with uh, aqua, aquaculture with tilapia fish. And uh, you'd really need to do a larger deal on that. Uh, like a swimming pool and like get one of those kiddie pools like a 5,000 gallon one you know about four feet high you can actually pull that off with a with a with a, something like that if you want to raise fish but and I was actually going to put it up in there where you see all those 
and uh, Miss J Daisy shut that job down. She said, no, no, we'll, you can go catch your own fish. We don't need a big swimming pool in our backyard. So she's always right. Well, not always, but you know, 99% of the time. I just loaded this up yesterday back up and they're doing pretty good here. Um, I got to get into this hive. I noticed yesterday this this hive here, they were coming in with pollen and stuff. This is actually one of my packages. This is a package and that was a package, but I came back a week after I installed the package and there was no, no action, queen action in this thing at all. So I robbed the frame of eggs out of there and installed in here and then on on uh, five seven five seven would be one month since i did that let's just peek in the thing here and see how crazy this is i put a feed jar on here yesterday wow wow i think we have a success story here guys for the simple fact see that that one just came in loaded with heavy with pollen. There's another one. That is a beautiful indicator that we have a success story here. But this one here, this hive here has been doing excellent. I've been robbing out of this thing. Every time she gets a nice frame of eggs, whatever, I rob it out. So I'm knocking her down a little bit as far as building this colony up, but she just keeps cranking. And new moon in uh, this month, which is May, I'm going to come through and try to get some, make some more, make some more hives. Yep, this is a package here. Uh, I need to get into that here in a few days, and I need to get into this one in a few days. That's our, that's our fourth package. I put them on eight frame, and I put the, of course, these are fives. Once they blow them out, I can do one or two things. I can throw them in another eight, throw them in another eight, or I can take one of my, these are my beefy beehives. I don't have this material anymore. So what I'm gonna do from now on, I can do one or two things. Because I like the beefy idea of you making, making my ends out of, two inch stock which is actually inch and a half you'll see I've got three quarter size but inch and a half. I, I just love this because it's so simplicity of building it I don't have those crazy box joints you've got all this material here and you only need three screws per, per side use glue and the cutout piece it usually comes out like this because this cutout piece came from in this crack right here when I created that. So you set your saw blade up for three quarter high and three quarter in. So simple, you knock it out, you salvage this piece to go in here for your handle. So I love that. So simple. It's the KISS system. Keep it simple, stupid. Nice thing about these little nukes here, I've got removable bottoms. Okay, so when that thing gets blown out, I've had as many as four, four of these stacked on top of one of those. Of course, it gets a little high, especially when you're sitting on these rails. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to get out here with a weed eater. You can see this problem here I got going on here. Wow, what are these? <laughs> these are called ant ladders. They're ant ladders, and we don't like those. So I can do a couple of things. A lot of times I'll take salt, and I throw salt under here, and salt it will uh, kills it out for quite a while. Yeah, salt works pretty good. And, uh, yeah, this thing is coming along super good here, guys. It's what It's what's growing on. Yep, this thing will get very large by September. It's unbelievable how fast these Brazilian pepper grow. It's an invasive plant, but I love it. 
this one here i've got kind of an invasive i don't know if it's invasive or not but this is a uh, spanish needle growing under here spanish needle and here's the little needles right here every one of those is a seed bees work the heck out of the spanish needle i don't know how much stuff they get from it but it's everywhere in florida it's just going crazy but it's kind of choking out this thing and i need to get some nutrients this thing is looking but this is also a uh, sweet almond boy the smell of that stuff guys is fantastic absolutely fantastic you gotta make they ought to make a perfume out of that stuff they maybe they do i don't know uh, i've got another little growing on thing here i created this little bed here and i just started cramming in uh just as an experiment i had a lot of biochar in here and uh just for fun i mixed it with some topsoil and biochar and i had some of these barrels i cut off it's, they're kind of getting hidden in here in the jungle but they're half barrels and i put up a concrete block here and i just started throwing compost in here seaweed and biochar homemade biochar and then for the heck of it i did one year this is about six years ago i put in uh, some squash in here and it took off and did really well in that biochar but then i started to get more pineapple tops and i knew what to do with and so all these pineapple tops which were real small came from over there under that big oak so i just started stuffing them in here and this is what i've got so after you put your pineapple in in florida uh in th about three years you start getting this action now i'm not much into fruit anymore uh, i just don't need the carbs these are extremely sweet by the way extremely sweet and i just give them away for gifts all my carboholic friends you know You've seen them out there, guys. Look at the carboholic people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've also got some, uh, there's some more cassava. Look how, look how long that thing is. Now, the way you do these, you go in with a machete, just like the Mayan Indians do. They go in there and they chop them off. Now, you can lay them, bury them under the ground horizontally, or you can stick them in on a 45. I've seen most of the natives shoving them in on a 45 all the south american countries have these they do quite well and uh, it's a starchy potato it takes about uh, a year plus if i think if you come back in about two years this particular one's about two years old and they get a huge uh well it's huge it's about a big around and about a foot or so long tuber and you can bake them up like potatoes uh, you can boil them up the way I like to do them, I just cut all that rough bark off of the outside. And then I split it down the middle. And uh, and then I cut it into like french fries. And uh, you cover them with olive oil and, and sea salt and pepper and you bake it. And it's a very nice potato-like thing. Yeah. I've got some... Uh, longevity spinach going in here this is i've got to kind of clean up my bombing range here this is getting a little out of control but here i had a bed it's trying to crawl out of here this is a longevity spinach and actually it tastes pretty good I don't need a lot of greens, but so I'm basically a carnivore. Yeah. Hunter carnivore. And you can see this stuff here. What you do is you cut these off. This is a perfect one to do right here. You could do it with this little one. Cut this thing, cut it up down low with a machete and drag it over. Keep the top orientation like you see it. And I take a big screwdriver and jam it in the ground, wallow it out. 
and just cut a section, a one foot section, and they stick it in on a 45 degree angle. These things take off. It's a no brainer. It's easy to do. The uh, South American Indians have been doing this for thousands of years. The same thing. So if you get in Florida, it can only grow, I think, in a tropical scenario like Florida. I've got some uh, wax here from my comb. This is what I put my combs in. And I just save up a bunch of these little... You don't get a lot of out of those combs that that the uh, beetles take out and whatnot. But this stuff floats on top, so you can... Yeah. That water smells like wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something else back here i got to show you. Actually, a couple of things. Yeah, I'm kind of, bees are kind of on autopilot now for a while. For a few days. Then we'll, then, then we'll go around and play peekaboo in these hives and see what we can do with them. Because we want to constantly be pushing these queens to the max. Um, papaya. Papaya, papaya. I had another one in here and it fell over. It had a heart attack. I don't know why. This one came up beside it. Yeah. But yeah, that one's putting out a lot of fruit. I don't eat this fruit either. I have eaten it in the past. But uh, the chickens love it. So I give it to the chickens. When that fruit ripens, I take it over and those chickens tear it up like a bunch of wild monkeys. I've got elder elderberry coming here. I'm waiting for the seed to turn black. And as soon as it does, I'm going to harvest it. Got a lot of it up in there, all back in here. Back in there. I'm just waiting for waiting for the seeds to turn black. As soon as they do, I'm going to grab them and uh, harvest those. And we're going to make some more uh, elder tincture. Yeah. And the bees, the bees have been working this. It gets quite high, as you can see. It's way up there. Yep. Yeah. I got some wild oranges in here. Coming on. You can see the fruit there coming up. These are sweet, too. This came from nothing but wild seed. I, was, I had a pen in here at one time, and I was raising wild hogs in here. And uh, Miss Daisy shut that job down because we started having prevailing northwestern winds. And guess where that's going? Right up there to Miss Daisy's nose. And she was not thrilled about that. You can, can you imagine? Miss Daisy doesn't want to smell pig poop. Huh. I'll be darned. But yeah, this is a wild orange. And I was throwing everything in here for these wild pigs to eat. This thing is absolutely deadly too, by the way. This is absolutely deadly. See these spikes, guys? You talk about taking an eyeball out of your head. This thing is crazy dangerous. A vase of vine coming up here. Huh. I had another one over here. We have this thing in Florida called green blight, which is trying to take out the entire citrus industry. And for years, for years I had, well, I had two of them. I had this one here. This is one of the original ones. And then another one popped up here and it was doing super good. And then it had a heart attack. And then I had the boys come in and uh, had the boys come in and chop out down this huge oak that had, was loaded with mistletoe and I was afraid it was going to crash and smash this building flat so I had the boys drop it. We have a lot of invasive stuff. Here's another Brazilian pepper coming in here. I let them go. Here's another one here going, coming up. The grackle come in. They migrate in from the north every year 
and cover this area up and they just get drunk as a skunk as drunken sailors on those Brazilian pepper seeds and wherever they poop you have a Brazilian pepper here's another big problem child in Florida right here this is called potato vine and I never had any here at all until thank you very much my neighbor came over he needed to dump some dirt and for he had some of those potato seed in with his dirt and stuff and I didn't know it he dumped them out I've been trying to get a handle on it but it's totally out of control now these invasive vines oh they're terrible absolutely and the potato that comes off of them is poisonous you can't eat it so it's a total waste of time and effort here's another orange tree here and uh, yeah there's another one there it's doing quite well looks good but I don't see much fruit on it I was taking the green fruit and actually making a little bit of a like a lemonade with it about two years ago but I kind of stopped that stuff too but the only citrus I do anymore is some lemon I do that lemon thing you guys saw me do uh, Brazilian pepper where are you at <clears throat> you got to be more of it here's one right here check it out guys here's one right here that thing is getting to be monstrous I don't care it can turn into a monster everywhere where those pop up my bees are making it's unbelievable how much honey they can make in the fall September 15th in Florida remember that September 15th is when that thing's gonna rock and roll and man it'll be it'll be doing great oh there's the swamp hive back in there and the jungle just keeps trying to engulf it i just keep coming in here about every three or four days while well, i come in i'm pumping them up too look at here guys look at here brazilian pepper yep let's peek under here and see what's going on Oh yeah. Whoa. Lots of bees. A lot of bees. It kind of fakes you out, doesn't it? There's no bees hardly coming out. But it's early in the morning. It's 60. It was 60 something here this morning. I can't believe it. The uh, the weather this year. Usually it's quite hot quite hot by now I don't see here's a pretty old ancient palmetto right here look how long this thing is it goes from way over here all the way over here this thing is I'll bet you anything guys this is several hundred years old this this palmetto it had a stalk coming out of it this almost looks like last year's stalk I've talked to a few of the boys and they're saying that, that oh it's just getting going so I don't know I've seen it in all stages this year but I don't go to uh, I used to run about oh an hour north of my location here that's where I used to do all my gallberry and palmetto honey making uh, I did it for quite a few years and then the bears came in they're not hunting bears in Florida like they should be they got them on a, a endangered list uh i you know you know we got to have bears i guess guys but uh you know because they spread seeds they spread a lot of palmetto seeds all kinds of seeds actually yeah so bears are good to have it's good to have one of these things too guys in your bee yard this is just a pickle barrel I cut off, and in here is a piece of cypress wood that's been in here for years. Every once in a while it'll sink. It's about to sink now, but it's perfect because you don't have any treated wood to hurt the bees. They land on this thing, and then they can drink. Now, mosquitoes, I have to change this water every week because uh, the mosquitoes get in here and lay eggs. I don't need any more of that mosquito action. 
So there's a couple of trees out on the, I'm fixing to go on my hike. <clears throat> and um, there's a couple of trees out on the trail. Actually, I'm just going around the block here. It's about a two mile hike. And I got a couple of trees or a tree I want to show you. It's pretty cool. It's in another invasive tree. Uh, see, here's here's some more of this air potato. Called air potato. It is a Okay, we got this little patch here, guys. I thought I'd bring you by this little deal. Here is some uh, more Spanish needle. It's just going crazy in here. Uh, this is all longevity spinach here growing. All that ground cover. It makes a nice ground cover. I've stuck in a few, just for giggles, I've stuffed in a few pineapple plants to see. I'm always experimenting to see what goes. I got to get my scythe out and whack this down. This is lemongrass. It has all gone to seed. And uh, just this is an ugly mess there. As soon as you whack it down, it comes back out with real pretty looking uh, greenery. It makes a great ground cover, by the way. I don't know how far north you can go with that. This is Pakistani mulberry here. This, this has been a total joke so far. I had the big sales pitch put on me with this deal. It said it likes pruning. I, I prune it down every year. And, and I, it was dying, like dying out or something. It looked bad here a while back. And I threw some Epsom salts around the base of it. And boy, it just blew up here. So she's looking good. But as far as putting fruit out, uh, this this has been kind of a joke. Here's Here's a fruit here. It doesn't put out a lot. These things are supposed to, the story I get, these are four or five inches long, big as your thumb. I had the big sales pitch on me on that deal. Maybe I need two of them in here or whatever to get, you know, cross-pollination. Uh, this is spinach trees here. See all this stuff? They eat this stuff in South America. You better have a good gut track for this, though, because this stuff will give you the Hershey squirts, I'm telling you. It's got a cyanide in it, too, by the way. Just like the cassava. You can actually eat the cassava, yucca plant leaves, and uh, like you can these. But there's a cyanide in them. And actually, actually, they're blooming right now. Up here, as you can see. I don't know if you get a seed out of them yet or not. I haven't raised these long enough to really know yet. But, uh... They're getting quite crazy. I mean, the base, look at the bases on these things. And there's two different kinds here, as you can see. There's this, this leaf here. Look at this leaf here. The shape of that. And then look at this leaf here. It's like a turkey foot. It's two different varieties. And uh, my, my gut track didn't handle that well at all. What you do is you boil it. And then... You dump off the water to remove the cyanide, and then you uh, boil them up again. And it's like a spinach. Uh, if your gut track can handle it, mine doesn't. Because I'm a carnivore. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. uh, this plant here hasn't done very well. But uh, that's kava kava. Kava kava. And I had another kava kava. Oh, here it is, right here. That one right there. So maybe it'll do something. All right, let's go down the road. Okay, guys, here's another tree. It's invasive. Uh, these things get extremely tall. 30 feet or more tall. Uh, this is called Chinese, Chinese tallow. And here's the, here's the bloom started on it. These things get full of seeds. This thing's been back in here. It's been chopped off once. Somebody chopped it off here. They're all around the block. And uh, I started growing these things. I didn't put any of these in, by the way. The squirrels will bury the nuts on these things. And they get loaded with nuts. And I'm going to start germinating some more of these here. And uh, as soon as I get a hold of some seeds, 
uh, I had a guy that was doing my, he was doing all my um, honey extraction for me when I started up a second time, commercial action. I didn't have any extraction equipment. He was extracting my honey for me and out back of his place. It was just, he was down other side of the Skyway Bridge, down off of Fruitville Road, uh, south of the Skyway Bridge. Anyway, he had tons of these trees out back. And when this thing gets in full bloom, the bees are just roaring on it. And this is the tree that in China they make uh, they take the seeds and make a oil out of them and for biofuel but they say in Florida they don't not so much uh, it's an invasive tree came from China uh, didn't the virus come from China yeah I think it did anyway um, yeah this is an invasive tree that's landed here and it's doing quite well. I understand Alabama has a lot of this. So, they say wherever you find it, kill it. But all I can tell you guys is this makes a wonderful honey tree. So, anything to do with bees, I encourage it. But according to the state of Florida, no, no. But, it's here to stay like a lot of these invasive species they're here to stay so you can fight nature all you want to but nature usually wins all right let's go around the let's go around the block and i'm getting too much rest time here talking i gotta keep walking okay i'm about halfway around my hike here guys and uh what do we got here we got a zebra we got an old wore out looking donkey over there. And there's a emu, emu or whatever you want to call him, walking across there. This guy used to have about 50 of these emus in here. He had two huge water buffaloes. He had two big camels in here. And then he has some African game, some elands. He had some Panagodian Myras. They looked like a great big guinea pig. They were running around in here. And uh, I talked to the old boy. He's a, he's a uh, foot surgeon. And uh, this is, was his hobby. He used to have ringtail lemurs and those pens over there. And I could hear those things screaming and mating calling way over at my place. But I always hear these zebras. These zebras are very vicious critters. And I heard the camels just screaming one day. Just screaming. So I was on my hike anyway. I came around the bend. And here these zebras are just torturing these poor camels. Running up and biting them in the butt and everything. And uh, I asked him the other day... Uh, what happened to the other zebras and the water buffalo? He said, oh, they all died of old age. Really? I said, what do you do with a carcass? Oh, I drag them out back and let the coyotes eat them. So, yeah, that's what we do. And so he's getting down low. He's getting the old doctor. He's getting old. I think he's about ready to throw in the towel on this whole operation, I'm guessing. But, uh... Yeah, the the, uh, the camels both died because he had the elands. Now, the elands are the ones with the real big sweep back horns, dagger-like horns on them. They're long. They're like three, four foot long. They sweep back, just deadly weapons. And he would, of course, throw the hay out and stuff for them. They'd all come rushing in. And the elands had an attitude with the camels. Uh, can you imagine, imagine that? Uh, different animals with different attitudes. And the elands would just bend down and run them up and just stab them right through the guts. Both camels were taken out by the elands. And then, uh, of course, he called the vet in. The vet came in, looked at him, and said, no, I can't save him. But I would like to, uh, can I have his head? And he said, what in the world would you want to do with a head? He said, I'll take it to my taxidermist, have it mounted. He said, oh my God, these are my pets. 
how dare you? He said, I just thought I'd ask the question. I think they'd look, the camel head would look cool on my wall. So he just, instead of that, he just drug them out back and let the coyotes eat them, okay? So that's the story of the camel story. And then here we go here. Here's another, a tallow, Chinese tallow. It's getting up there, but it doesn't have, it's got a few, here's one bud here. Not much, it's just getting started, but here's some more here, little bitty ones. So it's just getting started, but this isn't a very impressive, uh, you know, specimen. There's one around the corner I wanted to show you. We'll go look at that. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? Huh? How you doing? You okay? Are you okay, buddy? Huh? You all by yourself, huh? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, huh? How you doing? Should have brought you a carrot over. I bet you'd like a carrot. All right, buddy, I gotta go. I gotta do my walk. Have a good day. Yeah, here's another one, guys. This thing's going along pretty good here. This thing's kicking around. Look at it starting to come out. The bees are going to be on this real soon, guys. Real soon. Already, already got some love bugs working it. Those are a problem, child. But uh, yeah, this thing's. This is not a real, real pretty uh, one, but uh, it's putting out a lot of blooms, lots. So it's just about ready to go. Chinese tallow. All right, guys, here's a nice little specimen here. And it doesn't get as, it's coming along. It's got tons of bloom coming on it, but it's not as far along as that other one. This is a pretty nice specimen here. Uh, it's my neighbor here, Hippie John, I call him. Australian guy. Hippie John. I asked him how old this tree was. He said like three years old. So look at the caliper on that tree. What is that? Five? Maybe five and a half, six inch. Yeah, three years old. Uh, 15 feet probably. Okay, that's it, guys. That's it for today. Oh, I found another one on the cross. I've got them all the way around this section here. All the way around. Found a prettier a prettier one than this one right here. Hippie John's. Just around the corner. I haven't I haven't even noticed it. It was in that guy's front yard. I was going to go over and get a better look at it, but there was a guy right there trimming trees. And I said, nah, better, better walk on by. So I did. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. A little hike. Maybe you learned something. And uh, you guys have a good day. Be happy. Be strong. Because you know it. You know it. We got to keep getting our own. See you on the next one, guys. Bye bye.